Across the city, professional artists are involved in the creation of quality public art. Because of this, public art projects can be seen across the municipality. But we don't treat all kinds of publicly displayed art equally. It's no question that graffiti and public art are two overlapping art forms that share a common history and style. However, while one's considered illegal, the other is applauded and even commissioned. Why is that? To first understand graffiti as public art, we need to understand the difference between them. Graffiti is a blanket term that is used to describe writings or drawings made on a wall or other surface, usually, but not always, without permission and within public view. And it's nothing new. Graffiti has happened since ancient times, with examples dating back to ancient Egypt, Greece, and the Roman Empire. Modern day graffiti has evolved, with spray paint and paint markers becoming the most prominent mediums, and it's evidently a rapidly developing art form. Graffiti, like all public forms of art, brings life to the street. It showcases art to the public, allowing people to become engaged and interested in art in a way that they might otherwise not be exposed to. It is an accessible art form that anyone can participate in. No degree required, just spray paint and creativity. Folks are able to express themselves by simultaneously adding color and life to the city. The line between what is graffiti and what is legal public street art is so narrow that many times it's nearly impossible to tell them apart. With the HRM stating that their enforcement efforts related to illegal graffiti will sometimes require them to examine commissioned artwork. And here lies the problem when talking about increasing or celebrating graffiti. How can we promote the creation of positive street art without increasing the amount of art that many people find to be a nuisance or unsightly? Well, what if I told you that graffiti could actually decrease graffiti? In fact, Cook and Burt, creators of the Black Book Collective, state that murals actually prevent vandalism rather than encourage it. They explain that this is because there is a code of ethics that is shared within the graffiti community, which includes respecting others' work. And if someone is planning on painting over someone else's work, they better go big or go home. Therefore, legal murals discourage further vandalism and come with their own unwritten insurance policy. Artists will sometimes clean up their own works of art when tagged, relieving the building owner of managing vandalism and potentially lowering the municipality's graffiti removal costs. So we know that graffiti artists tend to respect other artists' work. But how does the HRM feel about non-commissioned graffiti? The answer is, unsurprisingly, not good. Graffiti is considered a crime, and it's heavily criticized by the municipality. Under the Municipal Graffiti Abatement Plan, the Halifax Regional Police defines illegal graffiti as writing, drawing, or symbols applied to any surface without the permission of the property owner, which constitutes property damage. The Halifax Regional Police encourages people to report graffiti and has gone as far as defining graffiti as an eyesore and a gateway crime. Seriously, HRP? A gateway crime? Because of this, there aren't many locations available for graffiti artists to legally paint in the HRM. Dartmouth Cove has the only available wall on public property. However, this wall is directly beside train tracks, and it is therefore illegal to stand by them. So, it begs the question, did the municipality really bother to make any space available to artists? Often, people who are undertaking acts of vandalism do so because they are underrepresented or feel unheard within their community. Tagging is a way for them to express themselves, make their voice heard, or even create a feeling of belonging within their neighborhood. Without a legal outlet, graffiti artists often resort to illegal measures in order to express themselves. Now we want to take a moment to stress that we're not advocating for vandalism. The destruction of public and private property is not something we condone. However, it's important to recognize that there are better ways at addressing the current issues. One of the biggest downfalls to the criminalization of all graffiti is the amount of money it costs to remove. In 2018, Halifax Regional Municipality had a $17,000 per month contract with Goodbye Graffiti. Moreover, there are studies that show that graffiti costs Canadian taxpayers around $1.4 billion a year. 
In 2006, the HRM enacted the Graffiti Management Plan, a plan that focused on five components, referred to as the five E's. Eradication, Education, Empowerment, Enforcement, and Economic Development. While the Graffiti Management Plan wasn't the best one out there, the program at least highlighted the importance of community development through mural programs. This facilitated the creation of youth murals across the municipality. This all came to an end when the Graffiti Abatement Plan replaced the Graffiti Management Plan in 2012. The Graffiti Abatement Plan is a zero-tolerance plan that highlights the importance of the removal, control, and reporting of graffiti. Urban art projects and mural programs were eradicated from the plan, which the HRM states is a decision based on research that proves that although urban art is an important component to a vibrant community, it no longer contributes to the management of graffiti. Unsurprisingly, reference to these findings or even the research in question was not mentioned. The HRM's graffiti abatement plan suppresses the art of graffiti rather than empowering it. But what about up and coming graffiti artists who want to practice their art form? How can HRM residents learn about or practice graffiti style art in a way that is both safe and legal? For some, without their own private property to use as canvas, the answer may be not at all. We interviewed a local artist, owner of Trackside Studios, to find out how the graffiti community felt about the municipality's negative attitude towards street art. While he found the current policies against artists to be discouraging, what he really wanted to hit on was the growing need for legal or free walls within the HRM. A free wall is an area that legally allows both new and experienced artists to practice and show off their skills. In downtown Halifax, there used to be a well-known free wall along Lower Water Street, commonly referred to as the Pit. However, around the same time that the HRM was approving the graffiti management plan, they revoked the area's free wall status. Police started to harass artists, and the owner of the site, Nova Scotia Power, filled in the lot. It was expressed to us that by including more spaces for artists to conjugate and practice, we can promote graffiti in places that are safe, supervised, and help foster a style of art that represents who we are as a city. And while Mike didn't want to guarantee that a free wall would put an end to all vandalism, he did joke that at least the quality of the graffiti would improve. So how have other Canadian cities approached the topic of public art and graffiti? What are their classifications of each? And do they provide support for artists looking to share their creations? As you can probably guess, Halifax is not the only Canadian city that takes a strong stance on graffiti. Edmonton, much like Halifax, is very anti-graffiti. However, unlike Halifax, Edmonton acknowledges that graffiti is a form of art and therefore places an emphasis on the removal and prevention of tagging, stating that tags make up 94% of the illegal street art found in the city. Edmonton also offers up to $750 worth of professional graffiti cleaning assistance to property owners. In Halifax, property owners are responsible for the removal of graffiti from their own property. Sure, they can request a free graffiti removal kit, but it only contains a few items, along with information on where to buy additional products. On the other hand, Toronto's approach to graffiti is completely different. Toronto implemented a comprehensive graffiti management plan, which highlighted the importance of graffiti prevention rather than its removal. For this program, Toronto invested $325,000 in 2012 for new street art to be created, along with four diversion and education programs for youth who have been involved in vandalism. Their program also amends city bylaws to differentiate between illegal tagging and authorized murals which allows property owners to apply to a panel to have wall art regularized. Unsurprisingly, the city states that ever since this innovative program has started, it has been successful in reducing graffiti vandalism, replacing it with vibrant, colorful, community-engaged street art. It's important to recognize that no matter how enforced graffiti is, it will always exist. It always has, and it always will. Simply classifying graffiti as illegal isn't going to stop artists from being creative and expressing themselves. The solution to lessen vandalism within our city is to engage with the graffiti community, to give artists an outlet, and to encourage street art. After all, couldn't we all use a little more color in our lives?